Okay guys, so check this out. I got this Microsoft Access form here and I just punched in some numbers there. I've got a, a Skype number there that can receive text messages and I'm gonna put in this message. You know, this is awesome sending SMS from Microsoft Access. And then I'm gonna hit go on that and that is gonna send a message to my Skype number. And check it out, there's the message. That is exactly what we wanna see. I'm your host, Sean McKenzie. Thank you for joining me once again on my channel on data engineering. In this episode, we go back to our Microsoft Access playlist and we're gonna talk about how to send SMS or text messages from our Access database so that we can you know, do all kinds of things like alert, alerting workers and you know, notifications and all kinds of other stuff. And actually, this is a topic that has been requested many times, so many thanks to those of you who have requested it. Let's get to it. Interested in more topics like these? Make sure to check out my Patreon. The link is in the description. Okay, guys, so this is a super fun one here today. I've got this little Access SMS database that I created there, and I'm going to hit the Create ribbon, and I'm just going to create a form from Form Design, something really simple here. I'll close the navigation pane, and I'm just going to go ahead and go to the Form Design ribbon there, and I'm going to grab a text box and just plunk it down on, onto our form. And that is exactly what we want to do. We've got one. I'm going to control C and control V that. So I just copied and pasted that. So now I have two uh, unbound controls there. I mean, you can bind this to a table or, you know, bind, you know, you can hook this up however you want to. Um, but in this case, I'm just going to punch some numbers onto a form and uh, we're going to get our messaging going. I'm setting up that SMS to phone uh, label there, and I'm going to set up the body. I guess not body. It's going to be message, um, and we will go ahead and extend our text box there so that we have a little bit of room to work with, and now we've got an SMS to phone, and we've got a message box, and we can uh, go into our properties for the text box and give it an appropriate name. We'll call it TXT phone for the, uh, the destination phone and the TXT message for the uh, message that we want to send. And we are using uh, Twilio today. I'm going to give some more detail toward the end of this discussion. Uh, so next we'll go to our controls again and we'll grab a button and we'll plunk that down onto our form as well. You may have the wizard pop up and you can just cancel that for now. And uh, our button is going to give us the ability to have an event, which is the click event. Uh, so we'll go to the other tab there and we'll give it an appropriate name. And then we'll go to the format tab and we can type into the uh, caption and that'll change what you see on the button itself. And then we can see our completed button there. Um, and we can highlight that again and this time we'll go back into our event tab and we're gonna go and look at the on click event and you can see the ellipsis there we're gonna click on that on the on click event and then we'll double click the code builder there and that's gonna give us uh, some code that's gonna run when we click the button and so that's very very helpful we're going to stick our code right into here today. If you have a big system and you need to send SMS from all different places, you probably want to put this into a module with as a function or as a subroutine. Uh, but for today, we'll just put it into our form. And we've got our uh, send an SMS message. We've put a little bit of a, of a comment at the top there and then we're going to have some variables that we're going to use. Now the first one is going to be the the URL string. Now when you create an account with Twilio, I created an account and just I I mean I just logged in, created an account, I put it a few dollars into the account so that I can send messages and you can see that accounts slash in there um, and after that you can see your account number and that's my account number that you can see there. 
And so the base of it, you'll see some examples if you click through. They have, they have some examples that you can look at. And I'll point to those at the end of this lesson here. Um, but you'd need to get that HTTPS string uh, as far as the messages.json at the end there. And then you're going to need some other data. Now, when you set up your account with Twilio, you'll get to you know pick a number or generate a number. They just gave me this one when I said get number. Um, so this is a, a phone number that I've gotten through Twilio. And... <clears throat> that is going to be our from number and you need to use the the plus and then the area code and all that kind of stuff when you put your number into the from uh, part of our data now we're going to build up a data string you can see I've, I've I'm building this data string here and the first part is from and then uh, the second part we're concatenating again and we're going to put our two and that's going to be the the txt phone whatever we type into that txt phone text box on our form and then we're going to continue building our data string here and we'll put our message in um, and I believe uh, we called it txt message and the data field is called body so we're going to put body equals and make sure you put the ampersand before um, the the, the fields after the from field uh, so that those ones are recognized um, and uh, that's going to build up that that string that has all of the data that we need in it and it's actually going to you know be uh, appended after the URL now I did not create my uh, my my variable there so let's go ahead and put an option explicit at the top there and option explicit is going to remind me it won't run anything unless I declare all of my variables and that is a nice uh, option to have and so okay so we've now built our our string there in our URL we have our account number uh, we have uh, a data string that we've created that has our data in it and now we can uh, you know get some variables for our username and password because we're going to need those as well and uh, the user is going to be a username that you you can get uh, in your Twilio account they will specify that they'll show it in some examples as well in this case uh, my username is exactly the same as my uh, account name and uh, the password is in this case I'm not going to put my password on here I've stored it in another module uh, as a public variable so I I'm not showing it there but you'll type in your password there and then I'm going to hit save here just to to uh, save our form our progress here and then we can continue on now I'm just going to make sure I'm going to move that over and just check that my SMS form has been saved and it is there that's great so now we've got uh, all of our variable data set up and that is exactly what we want to see there. Um, and so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go grab our XML library just like we did for the time that we worked with uh, our Base64. If you have not seen that episode, make sure you check that out. Um, this is a library that has a lot of really cool stuff. You can also, in this case, you can use the... Uh, the version 6 which is probably better but we're going to use version 3 today um, version 6 is much newer uh, we used version 3 before because it had some libraries that we wanted and we'll just try using version 3 today um, you may want to use version 6 for your project there uh, that we had in the selection list and so now we can go ahead and declare our request object our request and that'll be a server XML HTTP and then uh, once we have that um, that's going to allow us to talk to the internet basically and so we can set up our request um, I will set um, our request object equal to a new uh, server XML HTTP and that essentially creates a, a new instance of that object and then once we have an instance uh, ready to go we can say you know request.open 
and then we'll specify the method which is post because we're going to post use the post method we'll put our URL in there uh, we're not going to do asynchronous so we'll put false and then we're going to do uh, our username and password on the end of that um, so that it actually logs in uh, the way that we need to and then from there we can uh, set our request header now this is very very important because um, the content type is going to take all of that data that you see you know if you type in with all kinds of weird characters and stuff and what this request header is going to do is it's going to uh, make that content URL encoded so that it's safe to send across the internet and um, and that's going to allow us to work with the Twilio interface because um, that is what the Twilio interface is expecting. Um, we can't just send the message as it is with spaces in it and everything. Uh, we need to actually um, send uh, an encoded message. And so we'll say uh, once we've got our request header set, we'll say send the data um, and then the, the URL en encoding is all automatic. Um, so we don't have to do anything with that at that point. Um, and then once that's done, it just sends it. Uh, but we will grab the uh, request uh, response and we'll grab the text here. Yeah, text is better. Uh, so we'll grab the response text um, and we're going to just spit that out into the immediate window um, and, and we'll be good to go. So there's our request. We're going to post uh, using our URL um, and we're going to use our username and password. We're going to use that URL encoded uh, format and we're going to send that data uh, over our post request and then uh, we're going to spit out whatever comes back into the immediate window and that could be an error. Um, so I, in trying this out I had lots of errors and I spit those into the immediate window so I could see oh you know I was missing this or missing that and, and, and those kinds of things. Once we are finished with our code, we can go to our form that we have in design view and we can open that in form view and we can uh, go ahead and put in a, a destination number. Now I had to remember this Skype number that I have that I that's attached to my Skype account. Um, so I put in uh, now you do have to put in the the plus sign, I believe. So we've got to put in the plus and with the, you know, the uh, country code and the area code and all that stuff. Put in the full phone number um, and then the message, you can put in anything that you would have as a, uh, as a text message. Um, so in this case, I'll say this is awesome, you know, sending SMS from uh, MS Access. And uh, we'll hit send and then we can see what happens from there. And I did indeed get this message in my Skype number there, uh, which was great to see. And I tried this out on my phone as well, uh, using my phone number. And so that is exactly what we wanted to see. So uh, let's see the body. So this is the, the response text. So it gives you back a lot of the information that you sent into your request. Uh, you can see it has the date updated and all kinds of stuff in here. Um, error message is null, so it went through just fine. Um, and there's the message ID, the JSON message ID, um, and, and all kinds of stuff. And so you can see if you look through this message that's returned, um, there's all kinds of uh, uh, in information that you can use. Um, and you can see the phone numbers and all kinds of stuff. And you can actually go and look at this in your Twilio account as well. I believe you can, you can look at historical messaging and all kinds of things, what happened and all that kind of stuff. Now I should mention that I am not sponsored or I'm not an employee of Twilio. Uh, this is just a very nice way of sending SMS messages. But that is how you can send SMS messages using Microsoft Access. Are you a programmer looking for your next gig? Make sure to check out the additional links in the description.